Hello, ladies. Welcome to another episode of the Revitalized Womanhood podcast. And I am so excited. I'm always excited. Okay, first of all, I love that I can see antlers in your background. <laughs> I love it. Wife without telling love me love it, Willie. Wife. Yep. Love it. Love it. Uh, my dear friend, Julie Packer, is here with me because she has an incredible story. Incredible story. Not only just that she's my friend and she's just so lucky to be my friend. No, just kidding. <laughs> I am so have. lucky it's to be your friend. It's been almost 14 years. It like, has. I was in the shower. I was literally like shampooing. I'm like, how long have I known Julie for? <laughs> um, well, it was 13 years in January was when I started. Oh my heck, is that when you started? I was trying mm-hmm. to remember who was in my training class. Oh, and I was gosh. like, I can remember Cheryl and Nicole. Yep. There's a few of the originals. And that's all I can remember. The rest are just new. I'm like, I feel so old. <laughs> Like Someone asked me the other day, oh, Lona, because now Hayes is on the soccer team with Lona and Eric. Eric's their coach. Oh, so I get to see Lona now. And she's like, she's well, you dude. know, so-and-so. And I'm like, no, dude, mm-hmm. I don't. Like, I haven't been in dispatch for nine years. Isn't that like wild? 10 years. Wild. I That's feel like crazy. it was just yesterday with everybody. It's crazy, so crazy. Weird. Julie. Um, hi. Introduce yourself to my listeners. Oh, Who are you? Goodness. I'm Julie Packer. Like I said, I've known Gina. We met through Dispatch, 911 Dispatch, if you know her history. Um, she started a, two years before me, a year before me. Probably. Not quite. Anyways, we met through that and then Gina went and traveled the world and left me to hold down the fort. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But no, um, I am still a dispatcher. I actually went part-time after I had four babies really quick. Um, most of them weren't planned. They all just kind of surprised me. So I, Oh, we're going to come back to that. It's my favorite story. It's been told to random strangers, (laughs) random strangers know about your conception. They don't even know who you are. (laughs) My story. Oh, just wait till you hear hear, like the full weight loss story. Like there's a part of it in there and I don't know if you've told them all that, but anyways. Nope. Nope. I have not introduced (sighs) you yet. Yeah. So mom of four, full-time dispatcher. I actually went back full-time about two years ago. Um, COVID kind of did a number on us and I started actually working from home. So I met home probably like 50% of the time and then I go in 50% of the time still. So I just work my butt off and then I'm a at-home mom when I can be home. Sports mom galore. I've got busy, busy kids. They're just nonstop. So when I'm not working, I'm at a baseball field wearing a hat with a Coke in my hand. <laughs> That's my life, truly really working. Mom life. That's just life. We just bounce around. Um, I did kind of have a crazy two years. The last two years when I went back full time, I, um, sorry about that, okay. um, started a great, incredible weight loss journey um, with having four kids really fast. I put myself on the back burner and it showed in a lot of different ways. One being extreme weight gain. I got up to a pretty high number. Um, speaking of kids and then I just decided like something happened. Um, and I decided it was time to get control of my life. And so I, um, had weight loss surgery and started doing all these different changes for my lifestyle. And I've since lost about 162 pounds. So over half my body weight, Sorry, it's ringing me. That's okay. Me. We are mom life. Um, we already we already introduced <laughs> that as, hey guys, we both have our three year olds here today. We so have a <laughs> yes. So, anyways, um, crazy weight loss journey, and with it, I have found myself. I have found a new love for so many different things. Um, running being one of them. I'm a very avid runner now. I'm um, not that I'm very good at it, but I try and just all things health and wellness. So it's just been a wild journey and I love you're, it. It's been so fun. You're so cool. You are such an inspiration. You're such a rock star. I've been watching you on your journey and I absolutely <laughs> love it. 162 pounds over two years, just over two years. Yeah. I what What was it that, so go back to the beginning, go back to the beginning where, what happened that you oh, were just like, goodness. what so... is going on? <laughs> So actually started after I had my third baby. And this is kind of the crazy part of my story. So I had my third. I kind of still stayed pretty high. Um, if we'll throw numbers, we're going to get real transparent here. I probably stayed around like 250, 260. 
um, which was really big for my normal before I had babies. Um, so I had her and the weight just kind of kept going up. I had tried every yo-yo diet, every, everything, you name it. I really did try, but couldn't get myself to be consistent with anything. So, um, the height of COVID actually the very start of COVID, um, I had another friend that said, Hey, I'm going to Mexico to have weight loss surgery. And we had kind of discussed it, but I never like really looked into it, you know? So I said, okay, let's do it. Like, this is it. This is my chance. And so we did all the pre things and you have to go on a kind of pretty heavy diet for two weeks. Um, and they don't tell you leading up to it. You become very fertile. <laughs> and I had taken out my, I, you can tell where this is going, right? <laughs> so I took out my IUD cause I'm like, I'm just going to start fresh. I'm going to cut everything out. Like this is my go getter chance. And so I flew down and it was pr like legitimately the first like couple weeks of COVID when the world shut down, planes were shutting down, everything's shutting down. So we went down to Mexico to have weight loss surgery because I just had a lot of people tell me and she had researched the heck out of this clinic and it was great. And it was it anyways, in Tijuana. Yeah. That's one so of my we'll members, my assistant, actually, that's where she went to the exact same yeah. time. It was wild. So and it was great and they were wonderful. So we get there and as you're checking in, they do all these blood works and check your heart and just make sure you can have surgery. They've never met you before, obviously. And so we're in the same room and they're kind of doing all of our pre-op stuff. And I, I mean, I am on a table just ready to roll into surgery. I was first. And so they've got an EKG on me. They've got all these monitors and he's checking some stuff. And then this doctor comes in and they're Spanish speaking, like barely minimal English. And he goes, and I knew that I was supposed to start my period that day, like that exact day as I was, <laughs> and I had taken a pregnancy test the day before, because I'm like, I'm not really feeling periody, but like with your diet change so heavily, those two weeks leading up to it, your hormones are just all over the place. I'm like, no, I'm fine. You know, I'll start. And I'd even like message him like, if I start my period on in surgery, am I going to be okay? And they're like, yeah, you're fine. You know? Anyway, so this doctor comes in. I am like legitimately on the gurney ready to go into surgery. He goes, um, are you pregnant? I'm like, <laughs> no, there is no chance. He's like, is there a chance you're pregnant? I'm like, nope, no chance. I checked last night. I am fine. He goes, <laughs> you're pregnant. I'm like, I know. I'm like, you probably got her like blood work mixed up. Like, there's no way I'm pregnant. And it was, <laughs> it was my friend Whitney. And she's, he's like, no, you're pregnant. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm like, you need to go around that again. He goes, goes no, you, you really are pregnant. I'm like, what? Like, my mind blows out of, like, my brain. Like, I just couldn't. Could you have a normal conception, please? No. Can you please? <laughs> I was like, there is no way. I'm like, there's no way. And I legitimately tested the day before because I'm like, I just want to know. Like, I'm in the clear. This is good. Negative test, all the things. And he's like, no, you're pregnant. I'm like, go run that test again. So he did. came back. He's like, yeah, you're you're still pregnant. So by the way, it didn't change. Back. I know they take her back into this, like they go do surgery on her. I'm left in this like little tiny room in this Mexican hospital. No one speaks English. I'm like texting Lily, like, oh my gosh. And it's the height of COVID. Not surprise, to mention in the hospital. Lily, so I'm already surprise. Like, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna kill this baby because it's a COVID and I just flew on a plane and nobody knows what COVID does to pregnancy. Right. And so my brain, anyways. It just was wild. So I ended up going home the next day. <laughs> no surgery. They're like, we can do it, but you might miscarry. Obviously, I didn't want that to happen. So um, no surgery. Ended up going home. Went to my doctor, Lisa, and was like, um, they're saying I'm pregnant. And she's like, let's do a blood test. She goes, oh, yeah, you're very much pregnant. You're about six <laughs> weeks. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm dying. I'm it dying. was wild. I'm like, there is no way. There's no way. And I wasn't sick. I had no symptoms, like nothing. So anyways, I ended up miscarrying that baby about two weeks later. Oh, I know. I and I know, I know it was the search or the pre-op diet. Like there's no way you can really sustain a pregnancy on that. So it just, I it can't even imagine the stress was, of yeah. just that whole situation. Yeah. So it was hard because I didn't get the surgery and I was still feeling like huge oh. and fat and out of my comfort zone, just in my own body, throw, throw a miscarriage in the middle. So I just like plummeted like hardcore. And um, that was around Mother's Day, May-ish. And 
So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to reset, figure out what to do. I'm like, obviously we may be having another baby. Do I have one? Like I miscarried. Now's my chance to pull the plug if I want to literally. Um, and so then in July I was like, oh, I don't feel great. And yes, I know how babies are made everybody. Yes, you know. <laughs> We're not even oh, to that part yet. We're not we will to that take part. you all back to the beginning in a minute. No. We will take you back to oh, the beginning. We're goodness. not even to that part yet. <laughs> oh my goodness. So anyways, July is my birthday. I'm like, I don't feel great. Something's weird. I'm like, oh buddy. So sure enough, <laughs> pregnant <laughs> again, <laughs> which I was fine with. I kind of knew like maybe we had, like we weren't preventing. We said if it happens in the next few months, then great. If not, great. Um, so got pregnant, had a successful one. Now I have a three-year-old running around. Um, my husband went and got snipped two days after I had that three-year-old. <laughs> so like, this I think it. you're going to yeah. be the only person that has a vasectomy baby. <laughs> yes. No, seriously. And I probably, am convinced. Probably, I don't even think I that's really going to work. Probably. I don't. There's going to be one left in the barrel no, somehow. Just, and you're going to get soldier swimmers, guys. I don't even know how. Like, okay, I'm, let's I'm go back. i dewy drinks. Let's go back oh. to trip. Let's go back. Okay. Let's 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 bring them into the secret. Why this is so funny. I'm sitting okay. here dying. I'm <laughs> dying because I didn't even know about that one. Because okay, here's what happens. Julie and I haven't seen each other for a while. I mean, since I left dispatch, really. Have we bumped into each yeah. other at all? Not um, really. At the doctor's office. Well, we so that's pregnant. when. So that's when. So we both are pregnant with these COVID babies. Yeah. Not COVID babies, but COVID, COVID babies. babies. And I'm like, oh, hey. And she's like, oh, hey. And we're like, oh, hey. <laughs> like, there we go. The geriatric. I yep. have my 85th I'm... child brewing in there. <laughs> <laughs> we're fine. We're fine. Geriatric. <laughs> geriatric pregnancy. I'm oh, so my. old. My husband, every no. day he's like, is Guinness going to come to your hospital room? <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. Shut Possibly. up, you jerk. <laughs> anyway, so it. trippy. Let's take it back. Baby number one. Baby one conceived Surprise. on Valentine's Day. But with, was, what were you were uh, you were oh, on the pill? Well, I right? had. I was on birth control. Yes, right. I was on birth control. I had been dating my now husband for only a few months. Hi. <laughs> And he, yeah, we ended up pregnant and got married and had him. So he was on like just regular good old pill birth control. Um, Baby my number next two one was IUD. <laughs> and actually, I miscarried that one when I found out I was pregnant. Um, we oh, that's right. You pull. had to pull out your IUD. That's right. Yeah, so I, I forgot had to about pull that. The IUD out and miscarried, but then got pregnant. Apparently, again, you're very fertile when you pull an IUD. You're you very fertile all the time. Are you all kidding the me? There's no window where you are not. I'm <laughs> I love that you remember all this. this is the best. So anyways, yes, had an IUD, got it pulled, miscarried, um, and then got pregnant like six weeks, four or five weeks, like right after I actually went in to get like my levels checked to say, Hey, you're good in the clear, you know? And they're like, like oh, your well, levels you're are still pregnant. just really high. Like let's do an ultrasound, make sure everything's cleared out. They're like, Oh, you're three weeks pregnant again. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so there was that one. And then my third actually was planned. She was planned. And then my fourth was the story in Mexico. So all the babies, yes, I love again. you, friend. I, know how I love you. Oh my god, I know how they're made. You'd think I'd figure it I'm out. I'm dying. It's just, I'm dying, I'm... and I was so excited to be part of the journey because <laughs> I, I, I kid you not, that story has been told. Strangers that don't even know you know, know. about you. They oh, don't know they know, know about you, but they know about you. I drive you. a freaking minivan because of it. And I, if Gina has told the story truly, you know that I did not want kids. For a very long time. I knew eventually I probably would, but I really, when we first met in dispatch, I was this 21 year old little, I love to just live in the life. Yeah. And I was like, no kids, no, I'm good. I'm never doing that. And here I am with four in a minivan. So. Four and a minivan and the love of your life, you and, and Willie. And I just life. love you too. I love you we too are, so much. We really lucked out. We're, we're a good team. We work hard together. So. It works. When it works, it works. I know. When you make great, cute babies, you just 
they got to get down here somehow. Oh, I'm convinced. They <laughs> hey, just does anyone need a baby? I know a lady. She, she'll get one down here for you. <laughs> just call me. I'm still very much. No, it was hilarious. Oh, and when my we went gosh. in to get Willie snipped, like I said, Bridge was like three days old. Like I had just got home from the hospital and the doctor was like, okay, we're going to take him back. I'm like, okay, I'm coming with you. The doctor's like, no, like you don't want to come in and see us. So I'm like, I need like, to know. I need that to this make sure. <laughs> That th- this is done right. And so the whole time he's like in there snipping my husband's <laughs> junk. I'm like, are you sure you don't want to add an extra stitch in there or cauterize that twice? He's like, we've got it. You're like, you're fine. I'm like, no, I don't think you know my story. Like I literally think about it and I'm pregnant. So <laughs> anyways, that's how I got all my babies. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> no, I know. I love it's it. Wild. I love this it's journey. And I love that it's I love that it's, you look at it, it's been an adventure, you know, it's never been a bad thing. It's never, I mean, honestly, even from the beginning of, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was oh, like, yeah. well, was... here we go. Yeah, this I is, really this is the next chapter. The time. I'm like, oh, I drank some lake water because I would go boating all the time. It was spring. I'm like, oh, I drank that lake water. My friend's like, you are stupid. Go take a test. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not. Once I'm the like, test no. says you're pregnant, you're pregnant until and you I know for sure you're not. <laughs> it's funny. I read the very first test wrong. I'm like, oh, two lines negative. Done. Like, psh, I knew that wasn't it. And then I was like, wait a minute. That box says two lines is positive. I know, son of a. Oh my gosh. Great. Anyways, and I know. It was so. Just a time. What happened? So what happened then uh, after you and I meeting and seeing each other with these bellies and saying, "Hey, you're pregnant. Hey, you're pregnant." And then We're where pregnant. does your weight loss journey start from there? Oh my goodness. So obviously I had that baby and, um, I kind of say like Gina, I nursed my babies really well and would drop pretty, a lot of weight, pretty good. And then the minute I stopped nursing, I would just gain it all right back. And so I never could figure that out. And, um, after this one, again, it was COVID and COVID had just kind of like happened. And, um, we were trying to figure out, we had sold our house, so we were trying to figure out where we are going to go. So there's a lot of stressors with that because, you know, the market decided to explode. So just a ton of stress. And so I, again, gained and I got up to the last time I saw the scale was 298 pounds. But I Girl. know it was higher than that because I stopped looking for several months because I just was like, wow, this is new level of low. So or high, however you look at it. Um, so we ended up going to Legoland. We took all our kids to Legoland in the fall after Ridge was born. So about six months later, and I almost got kicked off a roller coaster (laughs) because they couldn't put the stupid lap dart down. I'm like, that's it. I'm done. Like, this is the most embarrassing moment of my life. Holy cow. I let myself get, I was looking at pictures like what in the world? Like, I felt like my chin was going to like pop. I was just so big and heavy and just unhealthy was the best word. Like you can, I call myself that, but really the big word was unhealthy. I just drank Coke. Like it was water. I ate anything to just make myself feel better. So I really just kind of was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to actually go down. I'm going to get that surgery. I'm going to make this a permanent thing in my life and make those changes. So I went back down. That was in November. I went down about four weeks later in December and, um, actually had surgery. It was funny because the doctors remembered me and they're like, are you pregnant this time? I'm like, don't put that juju out there. <laughs> like, but really check, check the test twice just in case. So, <laughs> but really I'm okay with you checking way. again. <laughs> just double check that one. So anyways, went and had surgery. It went fantastic. And I started dropping pretty quick. Like I lost about, I think close to 85 pounds. Um, in under a year, it was probably about seven, eight months. And then I really stalled. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't doing everything I possibly could. I didn't really like jump into the health journey. I think I was still just living, writing that surgery will do it for me. Even though I was really good, I like focused on my nutrition. I was really conscious about what I was eating and like, it just kind of health, like food habits, but I didn't really get into lifestyle habits, I guess you could say. Um, so then in, I hit my year mark and I was still kind of teetering under that like hundred pound mark of weight loss. I'm like, I am done. Like, this is so stupid. I know I can get lower. Um, 
I was frustrated that I couldn't hit that 100-pound weight loss because that's like a big journey in the weight loss surgery world. And I just couldn't hit it. I was like, what the crap? So um, I talked to my doctor again, who was so supportive. And I feel there's like such a stigma around weight loss surgery. And so I didn't really reach out to any of like our doctors, even though she was so supportive. She goes, yeah, I've seen a lot of great things. Like, I think this will be good for you. Um, so I just was kind of scared to ask for the next step or, or how I could help or what to do. And so I kind of reached out to her and I actually did start in, um, February I started also on the semi-glutide shots just to kind of kickstart myself back into it. But starting January 1st, I made the goal before that. So about a month before I made the goal, I'm just going to start running again. I knew I loved running. I stopped in 2023. Hurt because I was so big. Um, so I'm like, I'm just going to do it, even if it's a mile a day. So I kind of got into running, um, was trying to be consistent with that. And then I started the shots and I kind of noticed those, I started picking up again. I was losing, like, I feel great. And then I started encompassing like all things health. Like I just started taking my greens. I took more vitamins. I really, once I saw myself feeling a lot better, I was like, okay, I'm going to make a go of this. And so I set some big goals, um, as far as like running and health. And I really jumped into the running world. Um, and I, in about May, I was like, I'm going to train for the St. George marathon. <laughs> like I had never run a marathon before. I, the most I've ever done was a half. I'm like, but I, I think I can Which do Which is it. in October, right? It's the first Which weekend in October. October. So about six months. So May to October, that was your goal. Yep. So I'm like, I can do that. I can probably be fine. And so, um, at the same time, I really dove into work and dispatch and kind of my role with that. And I got on some different Utah state boards that I'm still a part of. And so I really like, I just kind of like explode. Like, I feel like last year really was such a big monumental year for me personally. Um, just with so many things work, I got into running my lot. Like are we just were in a good spot with our kids and our sports and all the things and just was a really felt like a really productive and healthy year. So with that, it just kind of took off. Um, and I finally, I broke my, my all time low barrier that I wanted to with weight loss to feel healthy was like 180. I was like, I felt really good around there. Um, when I was pregnant with my first, when I, uh, that was about what I had was when I had him. And I just saw those numbers kept dropping and I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I feel even better. I can run even farther. I am and so anyways, I just kind of kept going with it. I've tapered down on the shots now that I've kind of finished losing and now I'm just maintaining. But with that, I've upped my running and my physical fitness and things like that. So um, I had the goal to lose 150 by the marathon and I did it. I hit that goal on like two days before, actually. <laughs> so with it, I trained and I trained hard. I found a good group of running girls that I worked with and trained with and we ran the marathon and just crushed it and so ever since then I just noticed how good I feel with myself um physically I can run and chase my kids and not want to die I don't feel guilty when I eat those treats but I also am very self-conscious about my own health and things like that and it just was a big change like I just got to go to Disneyland with my oldest last week and I, there was room in the seat, like it, not even could I get on and put, close the lap bar, but like I was sliding around the seat with him. He's like, mom, you're crushing me. I'm like, oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> so it just is so fun to see like the non-scale victories that have come with weight loss and just how big of a change. It wasn't just in my physical health that made the difference. It mentally, I really came out of my shell and threw myself back and just in my own life. I really felt like I wasn't a part of my own life where present, I guess you could say, because I was just so tied up in my own misery of being unhealthy that it just took over. So now I'm just part of, I'm just happy and healthy and feel great and just make it every day. So do you, don't you feel like it was a ripple effect that once oh, you yeah. started seeing that you were putting yourself first and putting in the effort to fuel yourself and feed into yourself. It's like the whole thing with the airplane and the oxygen mask. It's like we spend our whole lives as mothers, <clears throat> excuse me, even just wives, as women. I mean, yes, there is, this is obviously not everyone, 
But for <laughs> my community's sake, we are constantly giving, giving, giving. I just did a post the other day. I don't know if you saw it. And it says the flamingo yeah. is the only animal that God created that actually physically shows how much they're giving to their their youth because it takes their pink away. Their right. pink is away. So when you see a flamingo that's faded, it's because it's a mother and it's given everything like, she's giving got. Everything. But well, what a perfect and- example for for us to see that as yeah. that. So do you feel like once you started making the connection towards loving yourself, putting into yourself, oh, right? Yeah. I deserve oh, this. Yeah. It it's like a ripple effect. Absolutely. And it wasn't just in like with just with my kids, it was in everything. My relationship with my husband, obviously there was all that just cuz you don't feel pretty enough to and not that he ever made me feel like that. He never in a million years he is just a saint and yeah, I'm like, why did you never tell me I was that unhealthy? Like looking back on pictures and like, you never said a word. You never said any, like I was almost mad at him. He's like, what did you want me to say? I'm like, that you're unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> like you something, say something. And he never did. Um, but it just, it is funny. It was a ripple effect. It helped my relationships at home. My kids, I, like I said, I can chase them around and be a sports mom and carry all their bags and not want to die work. I just feel so much more focused and alive and dispatching, you know, our schedules are still crap. So, um, just the lack of sleep on top of it. But now I don't feel like I want to die with not sleeping as much. (laughs) Not that I don't want to. How much of it do you feel like, um, your mindset was like, where was your mindset when you were back with all that weight Did you feel like, was it a conscious thing that you're like, oh, I should be better, but I'm not going to, or, uh, do you think, I don't know if you, this is a fair question to ask if you haven't done the work on it yet, but do you ever feel like you weren't deserving of putting all of this effort into yourself? Do you feel like, yeah, no, I definitely had like that moment where I'm like, I'm just, this is me now. Like I'm, a, this is just my life and this is, I just, just call it genetics, call it whatever. I just, yeah, I just never felt like it was, I tried, like I said, I would do these yo-yo diets and I just, I think for me, like I said, it was dispatching, even though I was part-time sleep was minimal. So when I was awake, I was so tired, um, throw in four kids under, you know, eight, nine years old, that's chasing a lot. And so in my free time, I was chasing them plus trying to sleep on graveyards. And so, yeah, it was hard. It was hard to just finally be like, this is, I need to do this for me. And which in effect did it for them. But with that, I also towards the end of last year, and I actually posted about this is finding the balance now because I know I want to do it for me. And I'm like, Oh crap, I really want to go get that run in, but that's an hour away from my kids. And so it really kind of has, now I'm in a different part of the journey because now I'm trying to find that good balance. Um, and training for a marathon alone just takes a lot of time. Like you don't realize how many hours you spend running early morning, late nights. So when I was training for that, I like justified it. Cause I'm like, I've, I've got this big goal and I need to hit it. And, um, my husband was so supportive and everything. And then once that was over, I kind of was like, okay, now what? Like, I still want to train, but like an hour away to, to go run is an hour away from my kids. But for what? Like I, I hit the goal I'm done. So now I'm, I'm actually in this very weird spot currently. <laughs> Even when I tell Willie a lot of time, like, I just, I want to set that next big goal and I'm trying to figure out what that goal is, whether it's another marathon or, um, kind of just, I just am in that kind of funky area or finding that balance, I guess you could say. And it is hard as a mom because you want to be there on every sports event. You want to be there for every game and you've got practices and you've got Valentine's parties you're planning and it, to find the balance between all of it. Plus working obviously is just, it's a lot. So I kind of, I'm on the back end of that journey, I feel like. And so it really is trying to remember why I did it all and maintain it. And I know why I did it all now that I've seen the difference and looking back on pictures, I know where I was and where I'm at now and where I was mentally between the two. And it is night and day. Like a lot of my really good friends, if you know me, it just, I wasn't myself for a solid five, six, seven years. And now they're like, you're back. You're so light and just 
constantly trying to like find the positive because you can't not take advantage of going through a journey like this and then being ungrateful that it really worked. And that if I can do it, I want to share any knowledge or any sort of insight I can to give to anybody, moms, especially because I know, I know I've been there. It just feels like impossible to get up off the couch. So. Well, and I want to talk about too, the stigma you talked about with the surgery is, is that there is a stigma around it. And it's so interesting because I remember my ex mother-in-law got it. So she was maybe one of the very first people to get it. That was the very first time I'd ever, I mean, I would have been 18 maybe. So let's not go there and count how many years ago that was, but So, and back then that was just unheard of. And I remember her having to measure this amount of oatmeal and only eat this amount of oatmeal. And I'm like, this is so bizarre. And then all of a sudden I saw her again. It was probably after our divorce. I saw her and I was like, she was just nothing, right? She just nothing. So what, how is it that this far into the future, here we are, and this is a surgery that is well known that lots of people are getting, but yet you still feel like you can't reach out for support in this. You know, I thought about that a lot. In the first go around of the surgery, it's funny, like my first surgery I didn't get because I was pregnant. Um, I didn't even tell my family. I didn't tell anybody. I told a few select people just because they noticed I wasn't like eating on the pre-op diet. Willie knew But I really only told maybe five or six people because I was just so embarrassed. One, that I had let myself get to that point and I had to admit that I needed help. And that's hard. That's hard to say, especially when it comes to weight loss or anything. It just is just to say I needed help. And I think that alone for me, for me, it was embarrassment that I was like, I am so big and I nothing fits. My clothes don't fit. Like I just, I needed the help, but, um, part of it, I feel like too also was, I feel like there's an even extra stigma if you go to Mexico for surgery. Um, just cause it, I feel like they feel like you're kind of taking the easy way out. Um, because in the United States, there's so many pre qualifications you have to do. You have to do therapy. You have to see a dietitian. You have to do all of this, which I going through it, I can see the need for that for a lot of people. Um, because you do need those people to check in. If you don't have an incredible support system, it's not going to work, period. Like you really have to have that with you. Um, and the discipline have, to do it. And the discipline. And so if you don't have those two, and so it really is important, but I kind of knew myself, I knew my support system would be great at home, Willie, um, my family members that kind of live close. Um so I felt I just was pretty confident. And then financially, it's a lot cheaper to go to Mexico. <laughs> so definitely I'm for not everything. saying Mexico is a better option. <laughs> but for me, I had researched it. Um, like I said, I knew that friend. She knew several people and resources and um, things for this specific clinic that we went to. And so I felt good as far as the doctor. I would researched it, made sure everything and So it just kind of worked out. That was kind of the better option for me, but I definitely see the need for it. But with that, again, I feel like the stigma for Mexico is easier because people feel like you're just taking the easy way out. They're just going to have surgery on anybody, which is not the case. You do still have to qualify and send some things and do the tests. And um, if you do it right, then obviously you're, they'll follow up with you if you have a good clinic from Mexico. Like I still had a doctor that followed up with me for every three months or whatever. So, um, but even then I feel like U.S. doctors, like I said, they don't necessarily support you because if something goes wrong in Mexico that you come back, they have to fix it. And so I feel like that kind of was a thing for a long time because everybody was just willy nilly going to whoever in Mexico to get surgery. And then all these doctors were fixing all these stomachs or mishaps for whatever reason. Um, So I made sure I did talk with my doctor. Like I said, she was so supportive. She just said research, make sure so I don't know. With this stigma, I, like I said, I feel like they people think it's the easy way out, and it's not. The 100% surgery was hard, especially, like I said, that first year when I only lost that 85 pounds. It's hard. Like, you want to go grab a burger and fries, but you know physically it will kill you. Like, it hurts. And so just the lifestyle changes alone with eating and anybody that's had an eating disorder. I wouldn't say I would binge eat, but I'm an emotional eater. Like, if I'm stressed, I will grab a chocolate and a Coke any day of the week. (laughs) Yeah. Still. So 
you really do have to change your lifestyle. And people, I like I said, I feel like people think it's an easy way out um, because it just takes that away. And it doesn't. You still can eat things. You just can't eat as much. And mm-hmm. so they just, I, I feel like that was a I- stigma for me. So. I think it's even harder because if people that don't know about this surgery, you have to be very, very intentional about what nutri- nutrition, your very. nutrition, what nutrients you're getting because yeah. your body's not getting near as much as it possibly can because you're having to limit the amount of food anyway, period. Right. So you have to be super intentional. And it is absolutely still a lifestyle change, just like going to the gym every day would be. I think, I think this stigma like you're saying is a the thing under the thing under the thing is the shame you felt right. shameful that you yeah. got this far and that Nobody now it was yeah and even for you to jump on a treadmill and start trying to run when you were 298 plus pounds what's going to happen to your knees what's going to happen to your you're joints right. what's going to happen to your it, it's that's i can't even put on a backpack that's 40 pounds and go hike up a mountain unless i train with it you can't just instantly put on that amount of weight and think right. that it's not going to damage so i think that 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 part of it is it's interesting that people feel like i'm talking to the people out there that maybe would like to get this surgery or that maybe are right. looking at this as an option because First of all, you need to get into your own mind first and who who do you care about? Who cares? Who cares? You are worried about, you're sitting here saying, I worried what people would think. I worried. And that goes to, let's do some work on you first because you need to figure out that this if this is going to be good for you, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. doesn't matter what anybody else's perceptions are. Right. So doing that kind of work. but. If you could go back and and tell any of these people that are thinking about not even just the surgery, I mean the journey that you've been on, yeah. what would you tell to them? Like imagine that moment when you were like, "Do it." I would this just seriously. I would just say, continue. just jump in both feet. But with that, it doesn't have to be a splash that clears the whole pool out at one time. Like your jump in could be small. It could be just starting a walk outside once a day for 20 minutes like and that's the thing I tell people if you follow me um it really is just about consistency and being like setting that mindset in your own world in your own life like if you don't have consistency in any of it surgery weight loss shots food and health exercise writing in your journal like that's something I've kind of started to if you don't stay consistent you will never see results you never will But to get yourself to that point, you have to be able to, one, admit that you need to make some changes. And if you're not willing to admit that, then nothing, it will be for nothing if you're not in the mindset. And going back to that first surgery, I was so just like gung-ho just because I wanted to, it was a weight loss. It was specifically for weight. Um, And I I will fully admit, now looking back, it was an easy out. Um, I just knew I was like, oh, everybody has everybody. It works on everybody. Like I had seen a few people like this, it works for everybody. And so I'm actually kind of glad I had that pregnancy and it did stop me because I don't think I would have been as successful the first time. I didn't research it as great as I should have or the pre-op or the post-op. I kind of just jumped into it, just expecting it to work. Um, But it wasn't until I hit that new point in my own life where I'd made that decision just for me and my wellness and health journey. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I really didn't. I looking back on it and even Willie, my husband said that he's like, I don't think you would have been successful the first time just because you like my mindset was totally different. So anybody that is looking into this journey or weight loss or anything, just getting control of your own health um, you really have to go into it with a mindset and I, everybody's mindset is different. It really is. Like I said, if it's you just for me and I tell everybody this, and there's been a few girls at work that have also had the surgery. And I think collectively as a center, we've lost over like 1500 pounds in the last like three years. Is that not wild? That's awesome. So there's actually quite a few others that have done it as well, but, um, I, they always ask me that, like, what got you to that point or what pushes you to keep going? And I tell everybody, I said, find your why. What's your why? 
for me, it was my kids and to ride a roller coaster. Like I tell everybody, I'm like, it was to ride a roller coaster. That was my why is to ride it comfortably, not be embarrassed to go on a ride with my kids because I only have so many years with them and I'm missing all of it. I was missing everything. So just find your why. And then once you find it and really hone in on it and are committed, then with commitment comes consistency and then your journey will take off. So I know (laughs) it's a lot. It was a lot. It really is. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, you know, of all the things I've learned from all of this, like what's the biggest takeaway? And like I said, yes, weight loss is great. Um, Obviously, you feel better in your clothes. You want to go buy new cute things that you couldn't wear. I went from a size 26, 28 jean. Like, I was pretty hefty. I was up there um, just size-wise because I had four kids. My hips were huge and all the things. And um, I'm down to, like, a size 8, 6, 8 on a good day. And I just, like, I think I'm like, this is also great. Like, this is awesome. Like, a lot of people like, this is what I did it for. But then I look back. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I could go to a swimming pool with my kids and not feel like I am just the beach dwell who can't move, who can't chase our kids. I couldn't chase my kids at a pool. And we go to the pool. We live in sunny St. George. It's 120 degrees here in the summer. Right. (laughs) And I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. I physically, I would just sit there because it hurt my body so bad. And I just knew I was missing everything and I just wanted to be there. So biggest takeaway, my why was my kids. And that's what pushed me to kind of do everything, my own physical health, my mental health, finding that journey. And then just kind of, it just really took off from there. So, well, and March is women in history. And for my sisterhood, for my community, I've kind of like worded it in the way for our monthly topic that it's the women who tell our stories. And this is exactly you telling a story to your kids right? You are creating a legacy for them to know that this is possible. If if they come up to something that they look at as impossible, they will look back on, my mom was 300 pounds and she lost it. And I love, I, I'm going to hit on that this surgery is not an easy way out again, because I have seen you training. I have seen you training and it looks disgusting. <laughs> I wouldn't it's wish hard. that on myself. It oh, looks man. awful. It's, I do not want to run. I don't want anything to do with it. I see how hard you're working. Yeah. And I know, I know when I go to the gym and what that looks like, and that's hard work. I, I left yesterday. <laughs> I left burn and I, I made a goal to, for the month, month of March, because Rick and I are going to Hawaii, just us in April. So for the month of March, I'm going to do two a days on Mondays and Wednesdays. So that means I go to burn for 45 minutes and then I head over to summit because I don't have daycare. Right I have free daycare over there. I've got daycare. Over there. <laughs> so go. yesterday was my first day and I left and I'm like, oh, I deserve Chick-fil-A so bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, so I totally. turned and I was headed to Chick-fil-A and I called one of yeah. my friends and I'm like, do you need some lunch? And she's like, no. And so I'm like, Fine, I guess yeah, I'll just eat this crap. apple squeeze in my bag. <laughs> and that's the thing with surgery too. I feel like everybody does it. And this is another stigma is you have surgery. So with that kind of full circle, you have this surgery and it's monumental and you lose half your stomach or a quarter of your stomach or whatever, how much they take. And like your world changes and you do have this like crazy set restricted diet. And I kind of got to that point where I'm like, okay, I didn't have surgery to make myself miserable though. And a lot of people, I feel like they're like, no Coke, no soda, no treats, no sugar, no. And yes, that is very important. And this is, I am not a doctor. So all your subscribers just know that. (laughs) I have a very different kind of mindset with it because I know people that do stay strict on that and it works for them. And that's kind of how they go with it. But I did not, I went into it also knowing I do not want to have the surgery to make myself miserable with everything. If I go out to dinner with my friends, I'm going to have a Coke to drink or those French fries with my kids. Or I, if I want a Snickers bar, I'll eat the dang Snickers bar. But it took me until I kind of got to that point where I was, I felt like I could balance it with, if I do work out, like I don't work out to stay skinny and super fit. I work out to eat the crap that I want to (laughs) eat. Like I deserve it. Like you said, 
Like, amen, right like, here. Know, Welcome to I the know, club. And I, know that's wrong, <laughs> and I know a lot of people who've had surgery are like, um, this girl's crazy and she's giving all the wrong information, but I don't believe <laughs> you should go into the surgery to make Welcome yourself miserable. Welcome to the miserable. corner of social media oh, where we don't and care. I'm sure people are going to be like, this girl, get her off of here. She doesn't know what she's talking about. But I just, I did not want to do it to make myself be miserable. And if you know me, this is also a wild fun fact. If you remember, Gina. I don't eat fruits and vegetables at all. Yes, I do remember that. And I that. have it for like 35 years. And Luckily, I'm not just they're saying, dehydrated I, I now and you can put it in your smoothie. <laughs> I literally have not eaten a fruit or vegetable in about 35. Well, no, not 35 because I'm 34. So probably like 30 years. And you can ask my mom and dad that. Like nothing. I just... I don't... I think it is a food aversion. I probably should get therapy for it and figure out why I hate them. <laughs> But even my husband, like, I truly I probably should so get therapy. That's another part of this journey is like, like, how'd you do that without eating salads every day? I'm like, I truly did not eat a single fruit or vegetable this whole journey. Not one. I just don't like them. I, they taste funky. So what'd you eat then? Um, just like a lot of protein drinks and uh, you focus on your protein heavily with the weight loss surgery. So I knew that was kind of a part of it. And with that first surgery, I didn't. I went into it like, I'm going to have to change my whole diet. And I was hoping it would change my mindset and that I would magically love fruits and vegetables again. I don't, I still don't. I hate them. <laughs> I would do smoothies. I can handle it in a smoothie. It's fine. But so that was a whole other thing in and of itself. So with surgery, that stigma is your life is over and everything you love to eat and you cannot eat a single potato chip in your life again. And that's not true. You can. You just have to find that balance and that consistency with everything else with it. Well, so, and you also figure out what's worth it and not, right? Because exactly. some things affect you, really you and you're like in, in bed that night going, son of a bitch, yeah, I'm never well, eating that again, yeah, right? Getting, yeah. Rice, definitely. Rice is my no-no. Like, And that's common with weight loss surgery is rice just because it fills you up so fast. But so anyways, I just, I, with the well the surgery and everything it really was kind of finding that balance of I didn't do it to be miserable or not to make my life enjoyable with the things I like I'm a foodie I'm a social foodie who doesn't love to go say hey let's go grab drinks or let's go get some appetizers on a Friday you know what I mean so yeah. with that it, it then it just kind of made it difficult but I have got myself to that point where I'm fine if I want to go out on a Friday with friends and go to dinner then we go to dinner and I eat so there's a lot of little stigmas. And with, like I said, with it, it just kind of all circles back to that encompassing. It was a shame thing. And now that I've been through it and I don't want any woman ever, I mean, men too, but obviously we're focusing on the womanhood. I would never want any woman to feel those thoughts that I felt around it. And even when I posted my very first, like when I hit that hundred mile or hundred pound mark, um, I don't know if you remember it like two years ago. Oh yeah. I, it was kind of a big monumental for me. Like I was holding it actually I equaled the weight of two of my kids, my second and my youngest. So my eight year old and my two year old at the time I was holding both of them. I'm like, I've lost this much weight, hundred pounds. Like I was holding both of them. I'm like, Holy crap, this is crazy. And, um, well, where was I going with this? Shoot, I don't remember. You don't want them to feel this way. You were telling oh, them, and I, I don't, don't want, want you to, to ever have these way. thoughts. And even when, so when I was posting that picture, um, I knew people because I didn't rub until that point. I had been training, and it was before I really trained for that marathon. And so, unless you really knew me and kind of saw me progressively losing, a lot of people didn't know that. Oh, I was it was working. shocking. I didn't announce it. I didn't announce it. I didn't put it on social media up until that point. So when I posted that picture, I was like, do I post it? Because there's like that hashtag VSG, which means vertical gastric sleeve surgery. And um, obviously I followed a lot of girls who went through that surgery and they were kind of my inspirations and they gave me the tips and tricks and things like that. So I'm like, why am I ashamed? I followed those girls and because of them, I felt like I could do it. Like, why am I ashamed of that? And um, why would I, why would I try and hide it? So that's when I kind of just jumped in with both feet and just said, you know, I'm going to be open about this in my journey because it is part of it. I can't deny it. I can't deny and say that I lost all this weight and had all these big changes without the surgery. That was the first step in my journey. And that's I don't embracing you. That's loving like yourself. That. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's taking ownership of this is me. Yeah. This is my life. Like, yeah. 
And it really what, say what you want about it. Like, yeah, I don't care. And now looking back, I'm like, it, and it's like you said, it's becoming more and more common. Um, it's definitely more well known in the world and a lot of people do it. And for several different reasons, I mean, it could be for a number of reasons. A lot of diabetics do it because it just helps with diabetes. Like there's just a number of reasons why people have weight loss surgery, but, um, yeah, it just, it was, it was a shame thing. And I just wanted to, I don't want anybody to ever feel like that. I really don't. And I will shout it from the rooftops. Yes, I had it because it works. It does work if you put in the work. But it is not a catch-all. It is a tool in your journey of getting healthy. It's not the easy way out. So I just, if I could tell you anybody listening one thing, it's do not be ashamed because you're taking ownership of your own life and your journey to start something. But you do have to put in the work with it. So. Yeah. Reclaim your power. Reclaim yeah. your, like, and find your why. Why? What's, what's your I why? think, what's your why? Yep. And I don't know, I, if you follow or you can, I always post videos of me running in my gym and, um, or in my garage, I should say. And I have posted like pictures and I post it all the time because I want others to do it or see it. And there's just words of affirmation and pictures. And that's my why it's get up and go run more mile. Your sweat is worth it. Your kids, like I have pictures. My goal last year was to get to Nashville for, um, work. And I had a picture of Nashville, like right in front of my face. So as I was running, I knew I was running towards that goal physically, mentally, uh, like business wise, like everything I professionally is what I'm looking for. I just, you have to set those goals and literally run to them. <laughs> so right. to speak for me, That's for me beautiful. It was to run to them because if you don't and have them in your vision all the time, then it's, it's going to just not work. And I know that sounds kind of mean to say. But if you no. don't have them consistently in front of you, you're going to forget or we all start with New Year's goals. And then do you go back and look at them? Like, really, how often do you go back and look at your New Year's goals? Anybody? Right. Like up until two years ago, I didn't. So if I don't have them right in front of my face, literally, as I'm running to them, then I just feel like it's you're not. Gonna oh, be there's a statistic. Rick has all the statistics because, you know, him and numbers and he spouts them <laughs> off to me all the time. And I know they're good, but I don't remember yeah. them. But it's yeah. like the statistic of the percentage of people that if you don't write down your goals, they will never happen. They will never. Yeah. If you don't look at those goals every day, this percent will never happen. But, you know, it's like, so yeah, I, I agree. Sure. I totally agree. Uh, well, I love you, sis. I love you too. Thanks for it's being here so with fun, me. And I love the womanhood. It's a riot to see everybody and where it's taken off. And I just, I, if I could, like I said, say anything, just reach out. Honestly, if you ever need somebody to like talk to you about or respect, I'm on the edge or something like that, please reach out to me. I'll give Gina my Instagram just because I know how it feels. I know the exact spot you're in. Cause there, and there's a million different spots. And I don't say that lightly. Like I know that I'm at my heaviest and I don't feel good. I'm at my lightest. And how do I balance this now? And where am I at right now? or anything in between, or I feel like I can just start this diet and do this or anything of the sort. So if you ever are, or have questions about the surgery or anything like that, please reach out. I'm happy to talk to anybody because it just makes my heart happy that anybody would want to take control of their life. Like I did, because that really is what you're doing is taking control of your own life again. So where do you want them to go? You can just say it, say it, and I'll put it in the show notes as well. Um, just my Instagram. It's just Julie H. Packer. You'll see lots of pictures. Julie of H. Too. Packer. <laughs> Julie H. Packer, but <laughs> nothing fancy. And really, like I said, I'm not a professional. I'm not saying everything I did was the right way. It just worked for me. And I just. That's just, anything in life. That's yeah. anything in life is figuring out what works for you. I always say it's like getting on a road. Okay, why? Think of a road map. Like think of a map. We always say this when we're traveling. How did people travel back before GPS? Oh, like it's so bizarre. Like can you imagine either. opening yeah. this big old map? Like turn here. Yeah. <laughs> like, the Google Maps where you'd print oh, it out. Oh my like, gosh. The step by steps. Forget no. about it. The steps. No. Print out the steps. <laughs> oh man, you printed your Google Maps out. For yeah, real. amen. I remember that. But it's it's like that. It's like imagine how many roads. Even just think about California when you come into LA. Imagine how many different roads there are. Imagine your life is you yeah. are on one of these roads and you it's fine. You're on this road and then you're like, "Oh, oh, actually this isn't working for me. I need to be on that road." What do you do? Yeah. 
Nope. You, you get on the other turn. freaking road. You, you just go out. get on the other road. You figure it out. So if something's not working for you, that's that's all it is, is okay. people put so much into this. <gasps> I can't change. <gasps> I can't pivot. <gasps> I can't. And it's like, why? Who yeah. says? Who says you can't? Who are these people totally. telling you that you can't do these things? Yeah. And just finding the balance of it all in the mix of it, it's hard. It mentally, like you're, like you just have to work even harder and that's just the consistency part of it. So, Well, I have steps for that, ladies. You come see me. Yes. You start with going to revitalizewomanhood.com and doing the four weeks to a fresh start. And that's yeah. your first step. That that's where it. that's where you need to go next, Julie. Now oh, you can boy. create your next vision. <laughs> I am yeah I'm I'm working on it like I said yep. I've kind of got my little bit of a game plan just working but I think I'm I'm good so okay just trucking along just doing what we do but it's so fun it's a it's been a really fun journey and I hope to continue it and just like I said I think I feel like I'm to the point where if I can share my story to help somebody else now start their journey or continue or take theirs to the next step then it was all worth it. If I can just meet one person with my story to make them feel like they can do it too, then I will feel so good about coming out and saying, this is what I did. So hashtag goals, goals, reach them. You can do it. All if right. I can, lady. It, I can do it. You can do it. So. Oh my gosh. Right. I say that all the time. <laughs> really? <laughs> if no, I'm true. out here doing this. Anybody can be out it's here. Doing true this. though, man. It's with my pop tart in hand. Yes. And my Coke. I will never, I literally have my Coke right here, guys. Like I am, I am not above it. I'm not. And I'm not scared to say it. And anybody that knows me knows I always have a Coke with me nearby. So I just run a lot to drink my Coke. Yep. (laughs) It's It's fine. It's It's fine. Look at us making it through without three-year-olds blasting in here, smacking us. I'm actually wondering where mine is. I think it's down. I just thought the same thing. I thought, oh, at least yours is chasing chickens because mine's in the house. And I'm like, it's too quiet. (laughs) It's too quiet. Last time it was this, I found him and he had, I videoed it, but I never posted it. He had lotion all over oh, his face, no. all over his Jeez, hair. He was like oils. bathing oh. his like toys in the lotion. I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah, that's oh, that seems about face. right. I just kind of like rubbed it in. I'm like, <laughs> now you'll have soft skin for a week. It's fine. No all right, girl. Yes. I'll okay, talk to you. Anything. I'll talk to you later. Thank you, you so much. I love you. We'll talk to you later.